businesses. So we appreciate that very much. So at this time, it is my pleasure to announce the District 1 Position 4 candidate, Ms. Linda Jolly. Well, I brought a timer because I said five minutes. I could probably tell you stuff forever. Uh, Linda Jolly, I am running for the Board of uh, Trustees for the Community College. I have worked in Butler County about 18 years in El Dorado as an Economic Development Director for the City of El Dorado. Uh, I've been involved in real estate and um, economic development for almost 45 years, and I started really young, so you all, all know that. Um, my children uh, went to Roseville High School and graduated there, and my five grandchildren are in Butler uh, schools at this time, uh, in Circle and in Andover. <coughs> so education is really important to my husband and I. Uh, I do intend to retire at the end of this year, and thought that I would have time to um, dedicate to the Board of Trustees. Uh, in my work, I do work with the community college a lot and have over the last 18 years. Uh, workforce development is something that I'm very interested in. <clears throat> I've seen the need for training for um, companies and also seen the, the need of students that are trying to get jobs and just aren't adequately prepared. So we've heard through the years, we hear constantly from the employers what they're looking for. So it's important to me that we continue to provide training, not only for the employer's side, but also for the student and the employee. I'm very um, keen on creating livable wage jobs, not just a job. So. Um, I don't have an agenda for running for the commission or the board of trustees, um, but workforce is important to me, but I think that we have to take into consideration with all the decisions that we make, what impact it's going to have on the student, the taxpayer, our employees and employers and be sure that we make the right decisions. There's not one decision that you can carry through. Everything that comes to the trustees for decisions, you can't say I'm always gonna vote for the student or I'm always gonna vote for this. You have to take the time to analyze what is necessary so that we know what we're supposed to do. And I think it's as simple as um, looking at the economy of scale, the return on investment we're gonna get when we're making expenditures and also taking some common sense into consideration. Um, there's no reason to make a policy that in turn isn't going to be workable for either the student or the college itself. So uh, with that, I am anxious to have the opportunity to serve you and I would appreciate your vote on November 2nd. Thank you. Okay, at this time, I'd like to call John Lafine. Good afternoon. My name is John Lafine, and I am a candidate for Butler Community College Board of Trustees, District 1, Position 4. A little background about myself. I grew up in the Fargo, North Dakota area. My father was a owned and operated a grocery store, and uh, I grew up working from the age of eight, 13 in the store, eating dented, and our family ate at dented cans and broken boxes and everything. So we have, a, we know the value of hard work. Um, I have a degree in aerospace engineering from Wichita State. My lovely wife, Marcy, is here. She grew up a farm kid in Nebraska. We've lived in, lived in Andover here for 24 years. And um, uh, I'm looking forward to serving on the board of the trustees. Um, I have a background, uh, I, I'm currently, a, I, I direct the wind tunnel at NIAR at Wichita State, and I've uh, been doing that for about 20 years, and I've also managed other labs. In that role, I have to create, create my own revenue, and, um, and to, uh, to pay myself, my, all my staff and everything from customer testing. And so I have a, I have a very good business background with that. Um, 
when, it, when I started considering running for board of trustees, I've run, run into a lot of people that ask, well, what does a board of trustee do? And I'd ask for a show of hands, but I think a lot of people in here do. But it's amazing how people, what people do. So to answer that question, I've got here my proper tax statement from last year. Um, here it is right here. And uh, one of the roles of the butter, butler trustees is if you look on down, if you look at your property stack statement, uh, BCC general, and you'll see a mill levy. The board of trustees sets that mill levy and sets the tax. So my wife and I have paid 24 years of tax into this, into this college. I'm running as a conservative. I've been a conservative all my life, a Republican conservative. And I would like to focus on reducing that tax load to the best of our ability. Now, how do you do that? Those are good questions. Kind of like Linda says, I think, should I become elected? I intend to arrive at the board. I want to learn. I want to listen, understand, look at ways. Is there ways that out of county students or out of state students could possibly pay more? Is there a way to do that? I think as a board, if you had a focus on trying to reduce that level, if, if that was a goal, and you know, you look at your property and say it went down last year, maybe that continues over the next few years. Find some innovative ways to get resources. At the same time, focus on the students. But there's a, an outstanding resource. It's a great college. The students come out of there, and we gotta focus on getting quality students out of there. Maybe not just more students, but better quality students. And so there's, there's a way to do all that. There has to be. So there's, I look forward to going in there with my, and yes, there will be tough decisions. There will be times when, does this benefit, who does this benefit? Does this benefit the taxpayer? Does it benefit the college? Does it benefit the students? Those will be tough decisions. I'll have to rely on my conservative values. I fear only God. Make the best decision I can and represent you, the taxpayers, and the students the best I can. John Lafayne, I'm a candidate for Board of Trustees, District 1, Position 4. Appreciate your vote on November 2nd. Thank you, John. Now we're moving on to the USD 385 School Board, and the first person coming up is running in District 1, Position 4, and it's Audra Bell. Totally thought there were going to be more trustee people speaking. <laughs> I am Audra Bell, better known as Chef Bell. I actually teach right here in this very building. I am a butler grizzly. Um, I teach all things culinary, hospitality, tourism, all the things. I see some students in the room. Thank you. Um, I am an Andover resident of eight years. My husband and I moved here when our children were very small for the schools. I have two boys in middle school that have had a challenging year, to say the least. I have a very unique perspective in that I am a teacher. I was a teacher at Andover High last year. One hit wonder, one and done. If you wanna know why, find me after this meeting. <laughs> I am now here at Butler teaching the same courses. I do still have a lot of my same high school students. I love getting to see their, their faces and continue teaching and educating. Um, it means a lot to me. Last year as a teacher, um, in a hybrid situation, seeing what COVID did to students, seeing what it did to my own children, seeing it from pretty much every side there was to see it from, I was very saddened. It really, really broke my heart for what it did to these kids. And when I saw what my own kids went through and what my students went through, I kind of just decided this just can't be how things are. I didn't approve or agree uh, with our kids being held out of school as long as they were. Um, I don't agree um, or approve of some of the things that I saw in the halls last year. Um, you know, the elephant in the room, people say CRT is not being taught in our schools. You are correct, it is not in curriculum, but it is in our schools. It's in our schools in the libraries, in the hallways, in the locker rooms, it is there. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise, because it is. I saw it, I witnessed it, I lived it, my own children lived it. I think that the thing that propelled me the most to step up and to do this because it's because I feel like parents lost their voice. Parents need to have a voice. No one knows what's better for my children than me. If I wanna put my child in a mask, I should have that right. If I wanna put a needle in their arm, I have that 
choice. I have that right. The government does not. The school board does not. Nobody does. I do. I made them. I am a conservative. I am a mother. I am a teacher. I am also a small business owner. My husband and I have owned a flight school in Wichita for over a decade. You want to talk about, no offense, Nat's house budget, <laughs> try working under the FAA. <laughs> I mean, if you know, you know, right? Um, I'm a pilot. I obviously am a chef. I do all the things. Um, you know, my background, like I said, is very unique. It's very extensive. I have a lot to bring to the table. Um, there's, there's nothing more important than creating a leadership that is going to propel our children forward. Obviously, as a chef, um, Jolly, but sorry, I just see your names all over. I forget your first name, but I know it's Jolly. I'm 100% on board with you as a CTE teacher that our kids need skills. The kids that aren't going to college, they need to know how to get a job. They need to know how to make money. They need to know how to boil water. Let me tell you, half of them can't. They can't use knives, they can't do anything, but they need to have jobs. Most of so they're not living with their parents or me until they're 30, right? <laughs> we need to educate them, but we need to teach them how to enter the workforce. We need to teach them how to have these skills, how to be productive, contributing members of society. John, you said it too, God-fearing children, God-fearing people. That's what we need back in our schools. We don't need all this propaganda. We don't need all this fluff. We don't need vote reading challenges. We don't need CRT. We don't need any of that stuff. I need my kid to learn how to read, do math, and learn how to pay his bills and move out of my house when he's 18. That is what I need. They are. Those are my children. They just walked in the back of that room right there. Hi, boys. They're terrified of this process, let me tell you. Anyways, thank you to Becky and the Chamber and to everyone else for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the army of people behind us um, supporting us and, and helping us to move this this needle forward. Um, I'm so proud to be a resident of Andover. Um, I'm building my dream home in this town. My roots are planted. My husband and I and my kids, we're not going anywhere. So I'm going to fight for these schools, fight for these parents, fight for those kids back there and yours. Vote for Bell on November 2nd. <laughs>
the meeting that was live streamed real time that they can go back you know a couple of days later next week a month a month from now and, and reference back to hey we we were talking about this last meeting I want to know where we are on that per particular discussion topic and I think that's very important so um, Transparency is a mindset. In addition, I'd like to see that the curriculum that our children learn, whether it's social studies or math or reading, whatever those um, items are, that they, that parents have the ability to see what curriculum your child is going through, maybe by quarter uh, or semester, so that so that parents can be more involved in the in the educational process. <clears throat> and finally, I want to as as we proceed with the significant funding that our district has received from ESSER funds. If you don't know, that's the COVID money that was given to our schools to make sure that we can proceed with the academic excellence that we've come to know and love. <clears throat> I want to make sure that we utilize those ESSER funds in a very fiscally responsible way so that when we're, like we're discussing a school-based health clinic that will cost close to a million dollars over the next two years, I wanna make sure that that's the best option, that there's not more fiscally affordable options that could accomplish similar tasks. If not, and that's the best option, then I wanna make sure that's the case. But that's a significant amount of money, not to mention all the funding that Andover schools already receive. I wanna make sure that we're using our, stewarding our resources as appropriately as possible. So with that, I will ask for your vote on November 2nd. Vote Tim Brunson for Andover School Board. Thank you, Tim. Up next, we have District 3, Position 6, candidate Sonia Cox. Good evening, thank you for the opportunity to meet you all. I'm Sonia Cox and I am running for the District 3 seat, like Becky said. A pleasure to be here meeting you all. My goal as a board member is to advocate for teachers, parents, students, and also district taxpayers. I want to leverage communication, transparency, and accountability to enhance the engagement in our schools from all of those stakeholders. I will push to continue to build on Andover's tradition of excellence and to prepare students for success in this 21st century and beyond and ensure that the progress the district has made so far, it's not reversed, but push forward. My husband Brian and I have lived in Andover for over a decade. We have been married 22 years. We kind of waited a little bit to have kids. We have two kids, one that attends Sunflower Elementary in fourth grade and one that is a sixth grader in Andover Central Middle School. Before our kids started school, like many of you probably, we extensively evaluated where to send our kids for school. We toured everything available, parochial school, private school, Wichita schools, um, the school up north, you name it. And we decided Andover was the right community for us. We were impressed with what we saw in the hallways. We were impressed with what we saw in the classroom. And we have been impressed even to this day how our schools are still in the top five in our state. And that is a tradition to be proud of. I have been helping in my kids' classroom since they entered preschool. I have been, and I still are, a room mom. I am an active PTO participant, and both at the middle school and now at the elementary school also. I have been a member of the Sunflower Site Council. If you know what that is, it's a group of parents that collaborate with the principal for the past four years. So I've been in the classrooms, I've been in the schools, I have seen parents and teachers do their work, and I think I have also been donating my time and my talent in contributing to the schools. In my personal background, I have a master's in business administration, and I have four undergraduate majors in finance, economics, management, and marketing, all from Pitt State, so I am a gorilla. I am a business professional and I have been in the management and leadership roles for over 20 years. I have an understanding and experience with managing budgets, making resource allocation decisions, staffing decisions, and strategic decisions. I know the work it takes to build consensus. I know how to work in teams and how to maybe share a common goal but come about it from a different perspective 
So I know it takes hard work to accomplish goals. Um, I have many years of experience also serving on nonprofit boards, so this will not be my first board appearance. Um, and I'm an active, active member of my church. The St. Vincent de Paul Parish community is one of the many reasons why we love the Andover community. It's just the heart of it for us. Five months ago, I was not planning to be here talking to you, but because of my record of involvement, many people in my community, including my HOA, uh, decided or communicated to me that I need to run, that it was important to have a presence. So I talked to my husband, not knowing what was ahead. Um, we did a lot of praying and we decided that it would be the right thing. And I'm happy to be here. Regardless of the matter, I love this community and I'm happy to contribute. I wish, I wanna ask you, if you wish to see the same divisive policies of politics that you see maybe in Washington or Topeka, right here in Andover, I am not your candidate. I'm not bringing to you any political agenda. I'm not bringing to you any kind of partisan platform. So that's not what I'm bringing to you. I'm just a mom that loves her community. I love my kids. I want them to be successful. I truly hope we can put politics and divisiveness aside and move forward in the best interest of the students, the educators, and the beautiful Andover community. We have serious challenges ahead of us. For example, how do we address that gap in knowledge that we're seeing in our kids caused by COVID? Or how do we make sure teachers have the resources and the support they need to do a good job, the, the job they wanna do, right? Or how do we address the mental health crisis we're seeing? One in five high school students is thinking of harming themselves. That's just not good. Or how do we recruit teachers? Or how do we make sure the teachers stay in our district? Those are the true, true challenges we have ahead of us. But more important, when a student graduates, we need to ensure they have the skills they need to be successful. Whether they're gonna go to college or they're gonna join the workforce, we need to make sure they have what it takes to be successful at their job. Our actions today in the board will affect those things in the future. So we need to make sure we're focused. To do these new realities and be successful, we need modern thinking. We need not only to do new and innovative tools, but we need to build on the basics of reading, writing, and mathematics. But rather than just building on only that, we need more than that. We need to build on that. We need to incorporate modern skill sets that are gonna enable my kids and your kids to be successful. So I just want you to know a little bit about me. I'm Sonia Cox. I wanna be part of the future of my schools and I will continue to be part of that future, whether it's at the PTO or at the site council or on the sidelines at the board. But if you allow me to be there at the board table, I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Our next candidate with the school district is for District 2, Position 5, Jill Hodge. Thanks for letting me use my notes. I want to make sure I don't forget anything. Good evening, and thank you for all you do, Chamber of Commerce, for our community and for this introduction time tonight. Um, with less than two weeks until the election, I'm sure that you have, you probably know just about as much about us as you want to know, right? I'm sure you've seen our yard signs, read our posts on Facebook, but I wanted to use the time tonight to just give you a little glimpse into my heart and to make sure that you understand who I am and what I believe. First, I want you to know that I am a conservative Christian. My faith is the most important thing in my life and it guides the way I make decisions and the way I live. Next, I want you to know that I have never, I never have and I never will support critical race theory. CRT is a distraction and our state and district school boards have both said that CRT is not in our curriculum. I want our students to be educated, not indoctrinated. Finally, I want you to know that I agree that parents are the first and best advocates for their children, absolutely. 
I was blessed to know early in my life that I wanted to be a teacher. Although that the uh, dream of becoming a ballet teacher ended pretty early, thank goodness. Um, I also decided several years ago that I wanted to give something back to this wonderful community and school district and that that could be best fulfilled by being a voice for teachers, students, and parents on the end of our school board. Because of what I've learned and experienced as a career teacher, I know that I have what it takes to be an effective school board member. This role is not a stepping stone to a bigger political office. I'm in this for the long haul. Although I am new to the political world, I'm not new to Andover. I've been a part of the Andover schools in this community since my family moved to Kansas 23 years ago. There's never been a time in all those years that I haven't been involved in the Andover schools as a parent, teacher, and or volunteer. And for 15 of those years, I served in all three capacities simultaneously. My two amazing children are here to support me tonight. I want Bill and Lauren to stand up, have to have a show and tell, and just let you have a look at two successful and productive Andover High School graduates. They are products of excellent schools that gave them the skills that they need to prosper. And if you want to chat with them later, I'm sure they would give you a first-hand account of the kind of person I am. Although I love the Andover schools, I do not see them through rose-colored glasses. Are our schools perfect? Of course not. Do we have issues that need to be addressed? Yes. Can new school board members share and contribute their ideas and opinions to make our schools better? Definitely. Do I have the experience, leadership skills, communication skills, integrity, loyalty, commitment, and kindness to ask hard questions, to listen to the concerns and opinions of my constituents, and work as a team player with other board members to come to consensus and make our schools the best they can be? Absolutely and without a doubt. Who better than a 20-year-old, uh, no, 20-year-old, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Who better than a 20-year Andover teacher to know the wants, needs, and desires of her former colleagues? It's past time for an experienced educator to be on the Andover School Board. I excel in building relationships and I lead with integri integrity, honesty, positivity, and transparency. I possess the specialized skills and experience necessary to advocate for all students. I know without a doubt that student success depends on much more than test scores. There are many issues facing our schools today, but the bottom line for a school board member is to keep the needs of the students front and center. We can't allow ourselves to get sidetracked by political agendas and all the noise that competes for our attention. Education is not one size fits all. The Andover community must work with each other and not against each other to do what's best for our students. With teamwork and positive communication, we can accomplish great things. God made each of us with unique gifts, skills, abilities, thoughts, and behaviors. My desire is to help the Andover community embrace those diverse backgrounds and opinions, work together in unity to bring about action which produces positive results. We all want what's best for our students, so let's keep the main thing the main thing. I've been a part of this community for 23 years and have developed many strong and lasting relationships with the people here. A seat on the school board would allow me to use my gifts, talent, skills, and experience to give back to this community a fraction of what it's given me. I'm Jill Hodge, and I'd appreciate your vote on November 2nd. Thank you, Jill. And now, District 2, Position 5, I hope I pronounced her name, last name correctly, Brad Marikian. Marakian, I did not butcher it too bad. Here you go. Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much to the Chamber for inviting me and the other candidates here to speak with you today. My name is Brad Maraki, and my wife Emily and I have three boys in the district. Our two younger boys are still in elementary school. Uh, we also have uh, our oldest son is going to be in high school next year. I serve as Deputy General Counsel of Entrust Bank, and I also serve as Scoutmaster of my son's Boy Scout Troop 524. Uh, you know, I'm a fiscal social conservative. Uh, I'm proud to be endorsed by both Kansans for Life and by Congressman Ron Estes. Mm -hmm. 
So, just to clear the air, I'm an attorney. Uh, even worse, I'm a banking, a banking lawyer. Uh, but I do have some useful skills. For one thing, I'm good at asking questions. I'm good at taking seemingly complicated issues and breaking them down to smaller bites that are a little easier to understand and act upon. I want to use these skills to help provide all of our kids with the best possible education. I mean, I think that piece of it kind of goes without saying, right? It's what we all want as parents. But I think it's the job of the board to serve as a voice for the community and for parents in particular into the education our kids receive. It is not the job of the school board to serve as a passive rubber stamp for district employees. You know, I think that when we choose a school board member, we're not looking to hire another teacher. In my opinion, the purpose of school board members is to draw upon a diverse background in order to provide the skills to provide the oversight and the accountability that this district requires. I wanna use my skills to do just that. You know, I think it's also critically important that we get a few more parents on the board who have kids in the district now. We all hear about some of these controversial issues that are creeping into our schools, but when you're a parent with kids in the district, you've got just a little more skin in the game. We are directly impacted by decisions that this board makes, and I think it's about time we get a few more parents on the board who are willing to stand up and fight for our kids. We have got to get all of these hot button social issues out of the classroom. It does not matter whether you call it critical race theory or equity or anti-racism or whatever the next euphemistic term they come up with. It is all the same thing. And there is no excuse for treating our kids differently or teaching them that they should view themselves or others differently based upon skin color. That does not belong in our classrooms and it is creeping into our classrooms and we need board members who recognize that it is coming into our classrooms. You know, while the state is making this big push for more equity and social and emotional learning in our classrooms, our test scores are slipping. Some of you may be aware Andover has a very impressive graduation rate. It's upwards of 90% most years. What you may not realize is that according to state assessments, over 20% of Andover 10th graders are testing below grade level in math or English. We're not talking college proficiency here, folks. Over 20% aren't even at grade level, and yet we have close to a 90% graduation rate. Now, I don't wanna bring that graduation number down, but I think we need to take a serious look at what we can do to bring that other number up, and I don't think the answer is even more emphasis on social and emotional learning. I think the answer is we need to redouble our focus on academics and on the learning fundamentals that are gonna help our kids succeed in college and their careers. One, one final point, I work at a bank, financial literacy, very important to me. Andover offers a number of wonderful classes on this topic, but they're not required, I'm not really sure why. It seems like common sense to me that if we're gonna require kids to take health class, for example, we ought to be requiring them to take one semester of financial literacy before they make what for some of them could be one of the biggest financial decisions of their lives. It breaks my heart to hear about these kids that are saddled with tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt without a plan to repay it. I think that needs to change. So, if you agree with the things you heard from me today, I need your help. I need you to help me spread the word to your friends, your family, your neighbors about the importance of this race, and then I need you to get out and vote on November 2nd. And finally, on a personal note, to the candidates. Thank you all for having the courage to step forward and run. You all know that this has not been an easy process. This has not been without cost to us or our families. Some of the vitriol we have seen on social media is over the top. Stay strong, finish strong. The end is coming. <laughs> that sounded ominous, but the end is coming. <laughs> November 2nd, please vote for me for Andover School Board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brad. And now we are on to District 1, Position 4, Josh Wells.
Thank you, Peggy. Thank you to the chamber. Thanks to the fellow candidates who are here this evening. Um, good to see so many people out um, that are passionate about education and our city and our community and our county. Um, I'll spend about 20 seconds on me. This is not about me, but I'll tell you who I am. I'm Josh. I've been here for 42 years. Um, that's about how old I am. Uh, my mom taught here for 48, although I tell her she taught for 80 plus. Um, so I'm an Andover kid. I graduated from here. My wife graduated from here. We chose to return home to Wichita in the Andover area to uh, raise our family because it's a great community. And I'm very passionate about, about our community. Um, a little tidbit, tidbit about me. If you see that big lumbering B-29 that flies over Andover often, that's my fault. Uh, when you're leading that organization, um, the pilots ask where you want to fly, and I say, can you go wave at Andover, and we go that way. So that's what I do for a living. Enough about me, because again, this is not about me. This is about our community, our kids, and frankly, our schools and our nation. Look, you've heard, I agree with everything our candidates have said. We, we've got challenges. We've got uh, a mountain to climb. But it's going to take some time, and that's not a comfortable situation. Um, we have gotten into a place in our nation that uh, is not good. It's not good in our community. It's not good for our families. We've all experienced it. We've seen hatred uh, now for th almost three years, uh, and it's time to stop. If you've witnessed any of the activities that are going on in your schools, uh, in the school board meetings and those types of things, look, frankly, there's no room for that activity. Uh, CRT is a hot button issue. I will agree that CRT is not in our curriculum. You will not find it in there. I'm also a K-State guy. Here's where I'm going with that. You're thinking, how does that matter? I'm a get better every day guy. Okay, I'm a Bill Snyder guy. Win the day. I know that's not Bill Snyder, but I can be wishful thinking. Okay, I'm a get better every day guy. That means I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that someone in our district is not teaching the curriculum as the way it should be taught. Whether it's CRT related, whether it's human sexuality related, whether it's English, whether it's uh, math, I'm not gonna tell you that it's not happening, okay? Because it probably is, we've seen it, we've seen some examples. What I am here to tell you is that we have policies, procedures in place to deal with those types of things. And what's sad for me to tell you is that most of that activity, we must deal with in executive session. I can't tell you how we deal with it because I don't look good in orange. Although I'm a, somewhat of an Oklahoma State fan, I suppose, I don't look good in orange and I'm not gonna break the law. So I can't tell you how that works. But what I can tell you is that it takes a little bit of grace and a little bit of trust to serve in any elected office. Um, one of my mentors once told me, you know, um, if you work hard and you tell the truth, good things will happen. And that's what I do. It's the way I live my life. That's the way I raise my child, my children, by the way. Um, speaking of which, I have three. Uh, I too have kids in the school. I don't want people to think that school board members don't have kids in school. Those young girls are very important to me. I have a, a, a seventh grader at Andover Middle. I have a fourth grader at Wheatland. And then I have a three-year-old at Gray Creek. The trouble for me is I have three daughters. I don't know how to tell the youngest one no yet. And I'm a no drama guy. So that's what you're gonna get with me on the school board. I'm a no drama guy. I try to deal in facts. I try to make sure that I have the information and I try to make the best decision. Some of those decisions, yes, have been unpopular. I get it. But trust me, we're working very hard. I'm working very hard to make sure that we continue the longstanding legacy of Andover schools, that we continue to make for sure that our kids have the very best opportunities, the best educational opportunities, whether that's in the classroom or out of the classroom. And we need to get back to educating. We don't need to be doing healthcare. We don't need to be doing the county health department's job. We don't need to be doing anybody else's job. We are experts at education. We need to get there. We will get back there. So again, I'm running for re-election. I've been on the school board uh, since 2013. I'm a long-standing resident of, of Andover. I've been here, again, 42 years, and I sure would appreciate your continued support to be able to continue our legacy and our mission and join me in going to get better every single day. Again, I appreciate the time. I'm Josh Wells, and I sure would appreciate your vote on November 2nd. Thank you so much. Thank you, Josh. Now it is time to move on to the Andover City Council um, candidates. So we are going to start with Dr. Joseph Ford.
Good evening, my name is Dr. Joseph Ford and I'm running for Andover City Council. Uh, I've been married to my wife, uh, Crystal, now for 24 years and uh, she's the love of my life. And through that love, we have four beautiful children, uh, three of which have grown and have graduated from Andover Central High School. And our last one is at uh, Andover Middle School, I'm sorry, Andover Central Middle School. Um, you know, family is the most important thing in my life and it, it, uh, it drives everything that I do. Uh, I'm a graduate from Cleveland University in Kansas City where I got my doctorate in uh, chiropractic. I run three very busy clinics in Wichita and we're getting ready to add our fourth clinic uh, as well. So, um, I was appointed to the Andover City Council a year ago by Mayor Price and I've had the pleasure of uh, kind of getting to know how the city runs and functions. Uh, I'm very impressed with um, previous uh, city councils and previous uh, city administrators who've, who've kind of paved the way and kind of had some forward thinking and uh, current city administrators and current city council members that are um, prepping the city for the growth that we're about ready to, to see. It's, it's, it's going to be amazing. And uh, there's a lot happening, and it's very important that you have people on that board that uh, you can trust. So, um, you know, in about two two short weeks, about two weeks or so, uh, you'll be electing three people uh, to a seven-member body that will represent about 14,000 citizens here in the Andover. And it's important that we we bring people to that uh, board that uh, have confidence and integrity. I would be honored and privileged to be elected to represent the city as it moves forward. Some of the qualities and, and uh, that are forefront in my character uh, have stemmed greatly from my prior service and leadership in other communities that I've lived in. I've been very active in other chamber of commerces uh, that, I, that I've lived in those communities and also uh, as members, uh, as a volunteer firefighter, EMT, and police officer. So this isn't my first career as, that I chose. I, I, I changed that career later in life uh, to become a chiropractor. Um, but that being said, it's, it's very important uh, that we have a strong business and family community that reflects the qualities of the Andover. I'm, I'm honest with my approach to issues brought before the board and I'm motivated to serve the public interest. I'm someone who is balanced when it comes to representing all citizens in our community, regardless of uh, a party affiliation. I'm someone who understands and is committed to doing the job right. I'm dedicated to The time and energy it takes to understand the issues that are uh, coming before our city council on a daily basis. I am someone who is experienced in building relationships and collaborations with people, uh, as well as, as schools, chambers, and businesses, with a passion of growing um, opportunities for business development in our community. I hope as the community. <laughs> The uh, council sits together and, and works with the, the chamber and, and other entities throughout the community that we are able to identify entertainment venues and uh, retail businesses and restaurants that will come to our community and give us the quality of life uh, that is needed as, as the city grows and develops uh, around us. So we've got to have those, those amenities that will, will support us. It is my belief that the family unit is the basic building block of all communities. And I feel it is important for Andover to grow that we focus on family-friendly activities uh, for those opportunities. I want people to come to Andover, to move to Andover with their families and grow roots and call Andover home. These families will work, live, and play in Andover and will continue to grow and develop into the community that will be loved by all. That's why I call Andover home. Uh, my name is Dr. Joseph Ford. I'm running for Andover City Council, and I would approve, I would appreciate your vote. I would approve it. Would vote. I would like your vote.
Thank you, Dr. Ford. Appreciate that very much. Um, next up uh, for Andover City Council is Homer Henry. Thanks, Becky. At this time, go ahead and look at the back of your agendas. If your reference number 18, uh, sorry, that joke kind of fell flat. <laughs> good, good evening. Thank you to the Andover Chamber, Becky, for putting this together. For those of you that don't know, I'm Michael Henry. All my friends call me Homer. I've been happily married to my wife now for 12 years, and together we have three amazing children. I'm passionate about two things my family, and the place where I live and own a home, Andover, Kansas. I have worked at a locally operated pharmacy Dandoran drugstore for 25 years in county. I was appointed to the city council in 2019 and currently serve the Andover community on our city council. In the last two years, I've served as our city council liaison in the Andover Library Board, Site Plan Review Committee, and Chamber of Commerce. My wife and I started our Andover life 12 years ago we actually started our life together 12 years ago and decided to start it in Andover, Kansas. With the knowledge of a good school system, a great sense of safety, and a great place to get a good burger. In those 12 years, we have seen tremendous growth, tremendous growth in our population, city landscape, and sense of community. Let me elaborate more why we moved here in the first place on those three reasons, schools, safety, and businesses. First reason we moved here is our school. Andover Unified School District is home to over 5,000 kids. If elected to the city council, I want to keep with this tradition of the past and being a good partner to the education system and working with those elected to the school board. Also, given our kids and family an outlet with our park system and help sustain our community, quality of life, keeping us in line with why I moved here and for those moving here in the future. Next, our public safety. As our city grows in the area and population, I think back to a conversation with Fire Chief Russell. He said to me, you have to think that when there is a cardiac event, that first responders have about four minutes to start life-saving measures. That will be about one minute longer than hopefully this speech. I think our Andover first responders are one of our biggest values to our citizens. Ooh, thank you. <coughs> With Andover growing north to south, we have to plan for growth. Andover is known for planning. Andover is one of the best public safety systems around. I want to keep Andover the best by bringing in the second fire station south of 54400. I think with the 1% sales tax, this will help relieve some of the burden of the Andover resident taxpayers. This will help our Andover families prepare for the future by keeping us safe in the future. How long do you want? the Andover fire truck to get to you. Lastly, speaking of Andover, when I get my gas during the week, I try and make a conscious effort to get it in Andover. When I buy my groceries, I make a conscious effort to buy in Andover. When I eat meals out, which is very infrequently, wink, wink, <clears throat> I try to make a conscious effort to eat in Andover. If elected this year, I wanna help Andover grow into the future not just with rooftops, but also businesses, to help lessen the burden on the Andover taxpayers. We need more businesses to operate in Andover. I want us to focus on retaining our current businesses, which then will only help us recruit new businesses to the community. I want to focus on retention and recruitment of those businesses to Andover. I want to keep my business in Andover. I am Homer and running for your Andover City Council I'm looking for your vote in 2021. And if you want a family man to represent your family, I'm your guy. Thank you, God bless, and have a good time. Thank you, Homer. Next up, I'd like to ask Jody to come up. There you are. Jo Jody Rance, is, this is her first time running, so we're excited to have her here.
Good evening, everybody. I'd like to thank you all for being here. First off, and Becky, thank you for inviting me. Um, I am a longtime resident of Andover. I have lived here most of my adult life. Um, my husband and I purchased our home almost five years ago, and we purchased here because we wanted our kids to go to school here. Um, my oldest actually graduated from Andover High. She's actually a senior in college this year. So um, my middle daughter is actually a sophomore at Andover High, and then my youngest is in preschool. So I have a span of a lot of different years. Um, the reason I became interested in running for Andover City Council was um, I helped Mayor Price with his campaign, and I have been to pretty much every meeting since he was elected, as well as every workshop. If I don't attend it in person, I do watch it online so I can keep up with what's going on if I do miss it. Um, and I'm just looking forward to serving our community and seeing what we can all accomplish together. I'm an open book, so if anybody has any questions or anything, I'll answer it the best I can. You may not like it, but I'll tell you how it is anyway. So, and I would appreciate your vote November 2nd. Thanks, Jody. appreciate that. And last but definitely not least, um, our next candidate is Mike Warrington, Andover City Council. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I was holding up the back of the wall for everybody. <laughs> and also the door stop over there too. So. Um, I'm Mike Warrington and uh, I'm rerunning for Andover City Council. Uh, we moved here a little more than 10 years ago and uh, from Alabama uh, for, for my job. And uh, when we moved here, we were looking at uh, the schools. You know, that was, uh, we came from a very high ranked school in Fairhope, Alabama, and we wanted to uh, see what was comparable. So I mean, we, we we looked at all around Wichita and Mays, and, and we settled here in Andover, and uh, we are so glad we did. Um, I'm, obviously, I'm asking for your vote on November 2nd to continue my city council. Um, we've done a lot in Andover in these last years that I've been involved. Uh, I was on the planning commission before uh, uh, this last term of four years of city council. And that uh, really helped me a lot with understanding what is what goes on in the city, uh, the ins and outs, the planning, um, and uh, which was very good. Uh, I've been involved in a lot of uh, the things in the city, from the amphitheater to the disc golf park um, to the heritage, our new downtown, the Yorktown Road. Uh, I was the uh, uh, vice president of the uh, Invest uh, 385 bond issue. Um, and, uh, and, and always been a, uh, a um, promotion of the uh, park system, uh, 13th Street Park and, and uh, Central Park. Um, we all know that Andover is growing very fast. Um, our, the new census came out and we're 14,892 residents. Um, that's a 26% that's a growth from 2010. Uh, which we you know and and we know that not all the census work were, were were submitted in so we're a lot more than 14 892 um, another fact of Andover is um, we're the safest one of the safest cities in the, in the entire state and uh, that goes to our police department and actually also our community too and uh, obviously you know when we uh, moved here uh, we were looking at schools and uh, the niche.com has uh, Andover is one of the top uh, school systems in the state, and uh, we do appreciate that. Our city is growing. Just last week, we we approved three subdivisions. So it's, it's not like we're 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 staying even. We're we're, we're growing. Some of the things that we have on our list, and uh, and part of the one cent sales tax is our 13th Street Park 
and also our, our new fire, our proposed fire station on the south side. 13th Street Park, it's old. It, it, it needs a renovation. It needs to be torn down and, and brought back up again. Um, and my kids have been in sports for a long time and we, uh, we, we played at 13th Street Park and, and if, when, when you, when you, when the fields are tired, you have to go somewhere else. And so, you know, we play travel ball all over the place. So uh, I know these fields and, and I, uh, I think we need to get these replaced. As our city is growing, uh, the future highways will be coming through uh, in a few years or so. And one, one thing that we need to make sure is that our city is serviceable with our fire department. Um, I do think it's a good idea for us to have a fire station on the south side. Um, right now, I'm not quite sure if we can meet everybody in four minutes uh, on the south side. So that's something that we need to do because our city is still growing. Um, one other thing that uh, we have that we'll be talking about is our uh, expansion of our sewer system. Uh, we've done a fantastic job keeping up uh, the sewer lines in, in, our, in our town, but we are growing. And so uh, a, a new expansion of our sewer, sewer department, uh, you'll probably be seeing that pretty soon. Um, I want to talk about our new potential downtown, the Heritage. Um, that has been going on for, and, and y'all probably know some of it, and, and uh, but we that's been in the go for about four plus years now, and uh, it's going to bring a lot of really good businesses to our our, our city, our downtown, and uh, one of the things that uh, is great is is bringing our community together. So when I when I started the, this four years ago for running for city council then, um, and meeting with the developers of Yorktown and uh, the Heritage, uh, we, we, Andover needs somewhere to, somewhere to uh, connect, somewhere to go. And, and that, that's one of the things that is missing, and that's one of the things that I hope that this, uh, this new development can help. Um, it'll help us hang out, it'll help us you know, uh, chill, it'll help us uh, celebrate and love and, and bring the North and South together. It's not Andover, Andover Central. Uh, it's, one, it's one community and that's what we are. Uh, my experience uh, is uh, engineering. Um, I've uh, done that for over 20 years and uh, I currently work at uh, AR Commercial Roofing as the Director of, uh, of Engineering and Development. Um, we do a lot of commercial and uh, military jobs and uh, so obviously engineering, construction, planning and zoning. Um, I'm a government contractor. Uh, I'm a father of uh, three kids. My oldest graduated from Andover Central in 2017, who's now in their master's at Emporia. Uh, my son uh, graduated in 2020, he's now currently in the Air Force. And my youngest, uh, thank goodness, is, uh, is a senior at Andover Central, and, uh, and like I said, we, we can't wait. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she's a future case leader. So, um, Ann and I have been married for over 25 years, and uh, it's, it's been great, and raising three kids, and we, we loved uh, moving here to Andover, and uh, we'll be here for many years to come. Uh, it's been my pleasure to to serve you for four years, and I hope uh, we can do this for another four. Um, please visit my Facebook page, Mike Warrington, Focus on Our Future. Uh, let me hear from you. Uh, I get messages all the time. Uh, I, I would appreciate your vote for city council, and local elections matter. Thank you.